Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a deck profile here on an Egyptian God deck. So this here is a very long awaited deck profile that I was supposed to make because I did open up the structure decks uh, quite a while back. I'm not sure if I actually have already done a deck profile on this though. Uh, with that being said, this is just my most recent version of the actual deck itself. I am attempting to play in this particular format though it is not performing well. And honestly, this is arguably one of the worst structure decks that I've ever actually come out uh, in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. Um, it just came out at a very inappropriate time. And honestly, I have to say that even if this structure deck actually came out 10 years ago, it wouldn't do well at all, to be honest. Uh, it's just really slow. It's uh, really fallen behind. But uh, with that being said, this is uh, the best that I could actually make this deck pretty much be at. But the whole issue of the deck is that it just doesn't work as well as what you would expect from a structure deck being put together. And the unfortunate thing is that I did have to buy six structure decks, you know, three for Slifer, three for Obelisk. Uh, if anything, they barely qualify as a starter deck. But you know what? I have made it work to a certain degree and it is because of the case of certain cards that make this deck work that I'm able to actually present it uh, to you guys as a deck profile. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good in other senses here. But uh, yeah, we'll just discuss those cards when we get to them. But for the time being, this here is my take on the deck itself. Now, the reason why I have Slifer here and Obelisk on the side uh, separately is because this deck is essentially interchangeable between the two. Uh, this does not mean that you could actually just swap in the Wing Dragon of Ra. Uh, the Wing Dragon of Ra just utilizes uh, different cards like Ancient Chant, uh, a lot of other stuff like Blaze Cannon and Sun Unification. Those cards are used in Ra. And the thing is, you can't just uh, simply put Ra into this deck. It wouldn't work out. Uh, this deck works specifically to bring out Slifer and Obelisk and you really just have to interchange the cards. So for example, uh, for the Obelisk engine, you're playing three Obelisk and you're playing two Fist of Fate. For Slifer, you are playing three Slifer and you are also playing three copies of, uh, sorry, two copies of uh, Thunder Force Attack, which is Slifer's support card. So you're taking out three Slifer for three Obelisk, you're taking out two Thunder Force Attack for two Fist of Fate. And that's essentially swapping the variants between Slifer and Obelisk. And that's kind of what makes this deck so fun, is the fact that it has two variations with the exact same build. Uh, it's just really interesting in that sense. But uh, ultimately, yes, the deck doesn't perform as well as a lot of other structure decks out there. Still, this is something I've made work uh, to a certain degree. Um, but with that being said, let's just get started. Right off the bat, we are obviously going to have our three copies of Slife of the Sky Dragon. An absolutely amazing card, obviously. Uh, it is actually quite the underestimated card. I think it's a really underrated card for the fact that it's not necessarily the god that people want to uh, play. Most people want to play with the Winged Dragon of Ra for the fact that it did come out in its own set which is what made it so good. And it had a lot more support for its own deck itself. And then on top of that, you also have Obelisk the Tormentor, which straight up just has the 4,000 attack backing it up, making it one of the more optimal gods to play with. But that being said, that kind of leaves you with Slifer, which kind of just gives you this boss monster that depends on your hand size which is definitely unfortunate because most of the time I find myself only having at best three cards in my hand, so Slifer is at best a 3k beat stick. However, with that being said, Slifer does have a few pluses, and that is the fact that no matter what monster your opponent summons out, it does reduce it to 2,000, or, or reduce it by 2,000, and if it hits zero, it destroys the monster immediately. So if your opponent is trying to go for an XC summon, a Link summon, or even a Synchro summon, just by trying to build their board with smaller monsters, they are constantly going to be destroyed just by Slifer's effect. That is very powerful because it is pretty much a passive means of disrupting the opponent completely. Of course, in this particular case, this particular deck can obviously play with three Obelisk as I've already mentioned, so if you want to swap in three Obelisk instead, that's up to you. 
I play it interchangeably because it's just uh, more fun to have different variations of the deck. But that being said, this is uh, quite the underrated card that I think uh, doesn't get enough credit as it uh, deserves. Next up, we're playing three copies here of Ra's Disciple. Really crucial card for any god deck, really. It just uh, summons itself uh, out. What I mean is you normal summon it or special summon it and you bring out the other two from your deck right away. Really amazing there because it gives you immediately three cards to go for your tribute summon of your Egyptian god. Given it does take up one of your summons, so if you can special summon this, it would be ideal. But even if you normal summon this, as long as you have cards like double summon or advanced draw, you can get that additional normal summon for the turn to then tribute these three and go for your actual gods itself. So that's definitely very nice. But aside from that, it's the fact that this is still a really good card to kind of support the deck. Moving on, we're playing three copies here of Reactor Slime, a really amazing card. Uh, this card is pretty much just uh, mainly to go for your uh, Metal Reflex Slime, which is your trap card that comes out as a level 10 monster, uh, which brings out our fusion from the actual deck itself really easily. But uh, you essentially just go into your battle phase, tribute this off, set your Metal Reflex Slime, and you could actually just activate on that same turn as well. So definitely quite amazing there. Um, the other thing is uh, it's during the battle phase as a quick effect, so you could actually do this during your opponent's turn as well. Very nice, of course, if your opponent can really see it coming then they're going to react to it. So most of the time you will just be doing it on your own uh, battle phase anyway. However, let's say you played like, I don't know, Call of the Haunted. Not that anyone does play it anyway, but let's say that you did and you activated it during your opponent's turn, then you could actually essentially revive this, use its effect, tribute it off, bring out your Metal Reflex Slime and get out a 3000 War of Defense, which is definitely quite handy there. But that being said, I'm playing three copies of it just for consistency sake. You could actually drop it down to two copies, but uh, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm focusing more on the consistency part of it all, but if you want to play your own text to kind of make this deck work uh, to your favor, then go right ahead. Next up, I want to talk about these two cards at the same time, and that would be uh, Tellius, the Little Angel, as well as our Angel 01. They both came out simultaneously in the actual structure decks themselves. Uh, both cards are not particularly the most amazing, <laughs> but uh, with that being said, they are the main cards that kind of help you um, bring out your Egyptian gods, or at least support the deck. The minute Tellius leaves the field, you do get a token, which is pretty nice. And even in the graveyard, you can tribute something and get yourself pretty much two tokens as well, which is great. More fodder for your tribute summon of your uh, Egyptian god. Angel 01 can special summon itself easily just by revealing a level 7 or higher monster from your hand. Really easy, plus it gives you an additional normal summon as well. So if you have these two in the hand, that is ideal, really ideal. Um, obviously, it's going to be very difficult to pull off, but uh, there are definitely some easy combos. Uh, I think I could quickly show you guys one right now. So let's say you had um, one copy of a god, you had the Angel 01 and you had the Tellius. Uh, you could just normal summon out the Tellius, reveal your obelisk, summon out your uh, Angel 01, and you could essentially link your Tellius away to go for your Almirage. You get yourself your token, of course, and since Angel 01 technically allows you to go for your additional normal summon, uh, then you could just go for your obelisk by tributing your three monsters there. So it is a three card combo to go for just one god, but keep in mind you are bringing out a god here. So with that being said, it is still uh, quite nice. It's worth the payoff, honestly. It's worth the sacrifice of everything there, but uh, that's just the downside to playing the god deck itself. It's nothing wrong with these particular cards at all. They are still definitely quite amazing for the deck. Moving on, we're playing something that's a little underrated. That would be the three copies of Millennium Seeker. It is uh, quite an interesting card, not a card that you would usually go for because it is more of a reactive card. And honestly, I was really surprised by the fact that this is actually an ultra rare in a structure deck. I honestly feel like this was something that was a wasted slot, to be honest. It could have just been a common, uh, even if it's a new card in a set. But with that being said, it's something that I've chosen to play um, 
Not out of obligation, of course, but it's just something that I'm choosing to take in. But honestly, you could just sub this out and play any hand trap you actually want for the deck itself. It itself is kind of like a hand trap by being able to special summon itself out onto the field as long as you take damage of some sort. But uh, nevertheless, given that it is a monster, it does help you uh, get additional fodder to go for your tribute summons. For the last of the monsters, we're playing here one Mahama and two Gamma Seals. Gamma Seals is just great to get rid of your opponent's biggest monsters out there that are just so difficult to get over, uh, even for gods. But of course we have Mahama, which uh, is just my own personal tech that I find to be quite fun. So moving on to spells, we're playing two copies here of Thunder Force Attack. Obviously this is Slifer's support card. You can just switch it in for the uh, Fist of Fate instead if you want to play Obelisk, but this is definitely a really crucial card for the deck itself uh, if you are playing Slifer. Uh, just allowing you to regenerate your hand by destroying your opponent's monsters. If your opponent is playing a deck that generates more monsters, then you're able to reap the benefits a lot more. We're also playing two copies here of Soul Crossing, allowing you to use your opponent's monsters as tribute fodder. Definitely worthwhile. I'm playing only two copies just because it has its own restrictions, but you can definitely put in a third if you feel that it is necessary by taking out perhaps a Millennium Seeker. And of course, we're playing two copies of Divine Evolution, just giving your gods essentially immunity in some sort of way. But yeah, this is a really great card. I'm only playing two copies of it. So you could arguably not even bother playing it if you don't want to. Um, but given that this whole deck revolves around just the one god being our only win condition, uh, we definitely gotta play this. The next set of cards here we have is three copies of True Name and three copies of Advance or Card Advance. Uh, card Advance allows you to essentially rearrange your deck, uh, the top five cards that is, and that way you know the top card, so you could play the true name to then uh, bring out one of your gods, potentially. But uh, yeah, it's essentially a two card combo to bring out your one god. Uh, definitely more efficient than Tellius and Angel 01. It's quite annoying to see the fact that there's a lot of very specific card combos for this particular deck, and that a lot of these cards don't actually have too much uh, synergy to each other, but even so, I'm definitely okay with that. The true name and card advance is still something that I think is uh, quite necessary for this particular deck itself, even if it doesn't synergize with a lot of the other cards in the deck. Next up, we're playing just a lot of support for a god deck. We're playing two Mound of the Bound Creator, protecting our gods from any kind of... Uh, card effects. We're also playing two double summon just to allow us to obviously go for additional normal summons if necessary. And we're playing a one for one because we have the Angel 01 which it itself allows you to go for your additional normal summons as well. Then of course because we're playing the reactor slime we're also playing the metal reflect slime. Simply tribute this off and go for your Egyptian god slime. Really powerful, really good. We're also playing two copies here of our ultimate divine beast. Uh, just a really nice card to bring back your gods from the graveyard with an easy cost. We're playing plenty of spells and traps anyway. And finally, we're playing level resist war. If one of our bigger monsters happens to be destroyed, then level resist war can generate more monsters from our deck, which is definitely well worth it because we need more fodder to go for our tribute summons of our Egyptian gods. Last but not least, we have our extra deck. Uh, honestly, the only three cards or four, well, four cards you need uh, the one, two, three that we have here is the Egyptian God Slime, really easily uh, able to go into this. Uh, it does also count as uh, three tributes, so you could immediately just go for your Egyptian Gods. Though, you're bringing out a 3000 beat stick, which is already really powerful. Uh, mind you, this card is expensive, it's like $60 each. Uh, so, with that being said, I'm definitely really pleased that I managed to actually pull this card. Uh, but with that being said, um, it helps out the deck so much. We're also playing here the Al Mirage. I already showed you guys an actual combo to bring out the gods using Al Mirage. Uh, but we also just have here a Gaia Saber as well. Honestly, the rest of your extra deck doesn't really matter. So arguably, if you want to, you could play Pot of Extravagance in this particular deck to generate some card advantage. And that would actually work out in favor for the Slifer variant. Uh, obviously you guys know that you could easily just take out your Millennium Seekers as I mentioned earlier, 
but that definitely helps out for the deck. And the only cards you really need would be the Egyptian God Slime. But that being said, if you're able to generate so much card advantage off the uh, Pot of Extravagance, then I think there's no need for you to worry about the Egyptian God Slime anyway, since a lot of your other cards can easily bring out uh, your gods pretty easily. However, that was essentially it for today's deck profile, so I do hope you guys actually enjoyed this one. Uh, definitely leave me your thoughts as to what you thought about this particular build. Uh, definitely leave me down your own builds as well. That way uh, everyone can actually get an idea of how this deck is actually built, how this deck is actually played. Given that this particular deck doesn't seem to be too popular, so you don't actually see too many deck profiles on YouTube, uh, and that is definitely quite a shame because the fact that this is from a structure deck, you would actually think that it would have a bit more popularity, even if it isn't the top tier deck out there. But with that being said, thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you again in the next video, but till then, have a good day.